How you doing today, students? My name is Calvin Ryan, and today I'm sitting in for Tom Ritchie. All right, now, uh, today I'm going to be talking to you guys about Boss Tweed and Tammany Hall and the major part that Boss Tweed played in the building of New York City. But before I get into that, I'd like to give a quick shout out to my main man, my AP US history teacher, Mr. Peter Picone. I know you're watching, buddy. Um, now, Peter was my AP US history teacher, and I say, you know, if I didn't have him as a teacher, I don't think I would have learned half the stuff I did about U.S. history. So thank you for that. All right. Now back into the content. Okay. Now, William M. Tweed, or as he was known in New York, Boss Tweed, was the head of Tammany Hall during the mid to late 1800s. Now I'm talking like 1860s, 1870s. Like, this is right around the end of the Civil War, beginning of Reconstruction. But the thing is, this is in the North. This is in New York City. Now, he was known as Boss Tweed because he was the grand sanctum of Tammany Hall, and everything that happened in New York City went through him. All right, but first some background. Now, first we need to start out with Tammany Hall. Now, Tammany Hall was the democratic political machine during that era. And now, political machine, I'll give you the definition here. A political machine is a political group in which a group of supporters give their support to a political boss, right? and the boss rewards them for their efforts. Now this usually means that Boss Tweed would give these people jobs and in return the, pe the people would vote for him. And so basically they just keep his, him and his buddies in power for the Democratic Party. Now uh, what I'd say is a political machine is basically a legalized mafia that benefits a political party. In this case Tammany Hall benefited the Democrats. Remember that. Now. Uh, uh, Tweed was a Catholic, and during this time, like the 1860s, 70s, this, this was the first wave of immigration into the United States. And so you had a bunch of push and pull factors, people from Ireland, all these Catholics were moving over to the United States during this period of time. And that was what was able to get Boss Tweed to get so many immigrants to vote Democrat. And this is what helped him keep him and his friends in power. But before I get into how he guaranteed those jobs to the immigrants, I need to review Key Concept 6.1 and more specifically Key Concept 6.1a. Now 6.1a says that following the Civil War, government subsidies for transportation and communication systems helped open new markets in North America. Now although most government subsidies went to expansion westward, remember this was still 1800s, this is the period of Manifest Destiny baby, but uh, some of it went to New York. And so New York was the forefront of this new goal of industrializing the nation that we already had on the East Coast. So the government would give New York huge amounts of money for building their city, and Tweed would help decide who got these government grants. So naturally, Tweed allowed the patents of industry to bribe him for these grants, in which Tweed would take a cut of the money. So anyone who wanted to do business with Tweed in New York City had to pay a cut to Tweed of 15%. <laughs> Mild, huh? And now, remember how I said that Tweed got those immigrants' jobs? Oh yeah, he got those immigrants' jobs because the people that bribed him, he made them employ those immigrants. So that way, the immigrants had a job, the people that bribed him would have a grant, and he would get votes and he would get money out of it. So Tweed was just in a win-win situation, and everyone was winning due to this political corruption here. Except, of course, Republicans. This was Remember, this was a Democratic thing, all right? And now, um, now, as Tweed used this scandal more and more often, he came into a lot of money very fast, and he decided to step down from his power of, in New York, and step down. Uh, he was no longer the grand sanctum of Tammany Hall, but he still had political influence and power. Now, as he accumulated this great wealth, he started becoming more excessive in his spending and started to wear a diamond on his shirt. Now, this was noticed, and this is important because it was noticed by the cartoonist who was the uh, political cartoonist for Harper's Weekly, and his name is Thomas Nast. And Thomas Nast drew political cartoons for the newspaper Harper's Weekly, and he started to show some attention to Tweed by including him in his cartoons. And now, uh, Thomas Nast was a Republican cartoonist, so he was obviously against Tweed because Tweed was a Democrat, and he just wanted to show some light to this political corruption. 
So eventually, she started to show the political cartoons more and more. And each week in Harper's edition, in, in Harper's Weekly, he'd have a new edition which included a new political cartoon of Tweed. And this is when everything started to go wrong with Tweed. And so, in 1869, Tweed's old apprentice, John Hoffman, won the election for governor of New York. And with his buddy in office, Tweed decided it'd be a great idea uh, to bribe a few Republicans a total of $600,000 in order to help pass a city charter for New York City. Now, this charter gave uh, New York's finances uh, to New York's board of audit. And now, you know who sat on this board? Guess who? Yeah, you guessed it. Boss Tweed. All right. Now, Tweed, along with two others of his members of the Tweed Ring. Now, the Tweed Ring was basically just a bunch of his friends that were all Democrats that decided, we want you in power, we're going to keep you in power. And basically, it just helped all of them. And so, this basically, the new charter of New York gave the power to the Board of Audit for New York. And Tweed sat on that board, so he just basically had New York's checkbook entirely in his pocket. And somehow this just slipped right under the nose of New York City, but it did not slip under the nose of Thomas Nast. Now, Thomas Nast decided that uh, in this edition of Harper's Weekly, he was going to expose uh, Boss Tweed for who he really was, a crook. And so uh, he drew this political cartoon. I'll pull it up for you right here. And, uh, you know, after... The city of New York saw this cartoon. They just checked the, they checked the city records, and sure enough, the they saw the money was sent from city contractors directly to Tweed, basically ensuring that Tweed was corrupt and that he was bra getting bribes from people to get jobs. All right, and so this basically ended Tweed's long political reign of power, uh, and Tweed was arrested in 1871, and he died in prison seven years later on April 12th. 1878. And now here's a fun fact for you. The mayor of New York City prohibited the town from flying their staff at half-mast because he did not believe that Tweed was worthy of it. So that basically secured Tweed a legacy of infamy. And now, uh, now I got a short quiz for you guys to wrap up the video. All right, now William M. Tweed was known as Boss Tweed because he had a huge influence in this city. Now, your options are Louisville, New York, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. Correct answer there, New York. By the way, pause the video if you uh, want to take a little bit more time with these questions. Okay, this cartoonist was the main reason Tweed was caught lying and his scheme was uprooted. William Randolph Hearst, Joseph Pulitzer, Thomas Nast, or Ida B. Tarbell. Um, I recommend you know all of these names because these are all important characters uh, during the Progressive Era. Uh, but Thomas Nast is your correct answer. Now, uh, the next question is, the main goal of a political machine is to do what? Secure the votes of new immigrants, teach immigrants American culture and how to participate in democracy, or in how to speak English. The next one is, teach Americans how to participate in democracy and give immigrants information about political parties. Correct answer there is, secure the votes of new immigrants. And finally, question number four, Tweed was not pictured in Thomas Nass cartoons as what? A corrupt schemer, a thief, a fraud, or a good legislator? Easy answer here, a good legislator. He hated him. All right, and finally, I'll leave you with a little question to think about. Do you think that a certain amount of political corruption is necessary in order to get work done in government? Tweed was definitely corrupt, but it was this corruption that helped build New York City so darn fast. All right, so with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave you to it. You have fun studying a push. Uh, hit me up on social media. I'd love to interact with you guys on this topic. Tom Richard, out.